Hey guys, I'm um, here showing you how to replace a valve or both valve cover gaskets on your 2006 Lexus GS300. Um, you would have seen me replacing the air filter on a similar engine, um, a 2016 Lexus ES350 um, on my uh, on a, on a video I made previously, so um, this one is pretty much uh, the similar engine, the same as you see. The air box is still in the same location. The engines are the same, just the displacements are different. So on um, pretty much any Lexus or Toyota that has this engine, uh, maybe not in this configuration because this car is rear wheel drive. So if this was in a Camry, let's say, or a front wheel drive Lexus, the engine would be had flipped around. Um, you know like rotate it this way some so um, nonetheless the procedure will still be the same but this car is leaking very badly from the valve cover gasket so we're going to go ahead and replace both of them um, this will probably be a lengthy video and I apologize as I'm probably going to have to make uh, edit cuts and stuff into it because um, it may be getting dark on me soon and I can't uh, do the whole video at once uh, but the first thing you will want to do is to remove the plastic covers as you can already see I've done that there's one on this side of the engine and then there's one on the other side of the engine um, you just simply uh, pop up these little clips right here well the little clips that you see the plastic clips that are holding them on you can use a screwdriver to pop them up or uh, whatever you need pliers or something to pull them up and just get them out of the way then the first thing you will want to do is to remove the whole intake assembly so I will show you how to do that now um, the first thing you will want to do is to remove the connector up here off the mass airflow sensor you just simply push down right here on this connector and then just slide the connector off and then you can go on ahead and pull it out of its little tab here to get it off of that then the next thing you will want to do is to grab a 10 millimeter socket Um, and you can go on ahead and loosen up the air tube here. So get it nice and loose to make sure you don't have any problems trying to pull it off. Like so. And then the next thing you'll want to do is to pop off the three connectors to take the lid off. There's one here, one here, there's one in the back and one right here down the front. This is also a good time to change your air filter if you're here doing this. So you see that comes off and this air filter is disgusting. So I'll probably be getting a new one of these as well. Go ahead and just set everything down to the side. Okay, the air box is fine. You can leave that like this now. Now pretty much what you're trying to do is to get after the valve covers, which is this right here. So as you can tell, there's a lot of stuff on top of the valve covers, more so on the driver's side where you have to remove the um, intake manifold just to get at that side. So um, right now I'm going to do the, the passenger side and then later on we'll move to the other side. Um, this is a six hour job on book time, so you'd probably be looking to spend anywhere between I don't know, $900 to $1,200 to have this done depending on what shop you go to and what your rates are. Uh, a good backyard mechanic may charge you probably around 500 bucks to do this, maybe 600 bucks. But um, if you have just some basic hand tools, pretty much there are a lot of 10 millimeter bolts, 12 millimeter bolts, um, a few, ho few hose clamps to take off. If you, you know, feel comfortable doing that, then uh, you can certainly tackle this by yourself at home. You know, it'll probably take you about four hours or so. You know, wor working diligently. So, um, the, the main thing we want to do here now is just to get this whole intake system off. So, you can go ahead and remove the obvious things. You know, there's hose clamp here that we can take off and um, slide this. Actually, no, we'll go backwards. There's to take this hose clamp here off of the valve cover. Slide that up. And you can go ahead and use a flathead screwdriver to move that up off of there like so. This you do not need to take off, you can leave it there. 
there is a Phillips screwdriver right here that you need to unscrew to uh, loosen up the EVAP purge solenoid. Be careful, take your time so you don't lose your screws, then it'll fall down. So there you go, that loosens up the EVAP purge solenoid and you can just leave that there for now. Okay, you can go ahead now and get your 10 millimeter out, back out again, and, <clears throat> and loosen up this 10 millimeter right here, the hose clamp. Like so. And you can go ahead and just pull this right off. So as you can see, we've got a lot of the valve cover able to be um, access now with the intake out of the way. And this here you can go ahead and just pull off and um, you can disconnect it here at the connector, pull the connector off. Keep in mind some of these connectors might be old and brittle by now, but try and work your best with them. This you can kind of pretty much just tuck up over to the side and uh, just leave it how it is right now or if you want to go ahead and remove it you can do so by taking off this hose clamp right here and uh, and taking it out but I'm just gonna leave it right now on the side because it's really not in my way and, and whatnot so um, the next thing you will want to do is to disconnect the uh, connector here for the throttle position sensor or the driver motor you just go ahead and usually there will be clips but I can tell someone's already been here before taking this off because some of these connectors are broke um, so we'll take that off we'll go ahead and take off this connector right here as well just like I said be careful with them take off this connector right here actually first let's move this right here out of the way Just take off all the various connectors that way. They won't be in the way when you come to take off the valve cover. Disconnect all the coil packs. set these off to the side um, try to be try to be gentle with them if you can I know it's gonna be hard to but try to if you can this one right here doesn't want to play ball Just kind of move this down and set this stuff out of the way if you, as you, as you get to it. Okay. So the next thing you want to do now is to um, move on to this side. Remove the cold start injector over here. That's a 10 millimeter. Disconnect the connector on the side. Grab a 10 millimeter wrench to take the other nut off. So, 
Okay, gonna set that up here on the top. Just going around taking off any connector you're gonna see up here, I promise you we'll be taking them off. So you may as well go ahead and do so now as you're working your way around the engine. There's another 10 millimeter right here holding this wiring harness on. Get you around over here there's a 12 millimeter bolt right here on the side and a 12 millimeter straight down on this side of the this wiring harness that's holding the bracket you can go ahead and remove those so I get you a little closer there millimeter here and a 12 millimeter straight down right here connectors if you can't get to the back two that's okay you can get them get to them once you take the uh, intake manifold off We got all the connectors loose and whatnot. We can uh, focus on uh, other things we need to take off in order to get the intake manifold off. So the first thing we want to do is to, you're going to have to remove this here coolant line that goes through the throttle body. It's held on by a small, a small little clamp on the side. Um, keep in mind that coolant will want to come out of this. So. Uh, what I like to do is grab a little clamp like this. You can get it at, you know, pretty much anywhere, uh, Harbor Freight, and it'll grab and pinch the line so that coolant doesn't come out. So I'm going to do that before I take it off. Just put it right here, and then um, it'll just clamp the line and hold it there so so that nothing comes out. Then you can go ahead and use a set of pliers to remove the the clamp.
like so. Go ahead and just sit this down, tuck it down somewhere out of the way. You'll notice also to the left of that, pretty much right down here on the side, there is another hose clamp that goes to the throttle body as well. You can go ahead and loosen and take that one off. It'll also be another coolant line, so uh, be careful when you're taking it off. If you have another clamp, you can use that. But most of the time with this one, you can just uh, let it, you can just take it off and just stick it straight up in the air so it's not uh, in the way. All this right here should be loose and free to go. Um, on the back of the intake, right where you see this hose right here, there is another clamp back there that you can just pinch with your fingers and pull the hose off so that way it's not attached to the intake manifold. Like so. Just let that hang there to the side. Um, the only other thing that's holding on the back of the intake manifold at this point is one 10 millimeter bolt that's right here where I'm pointing at. You need to go out ahead and loosen this bolt right here and take it out. That way when you go to remove the intake manifold, it'll actually come up. So you can do that. It's easier to use a wrench to do that because you can get to it really easily. just like so. Okay, now we can move back to the driver's side. Okay, over here on this side, there's this bracket right here on the front, which is two 10 millimeter bolts. You can remove those in order to get the uh, intake manifold off as well. Lastly, again, just trying to go through everything to make sure that the intake manifold is going to come up cleanly. When you uh, disconnect the bolts here in the middle, you don't want to be yanking on it and you break something, break a vacuum line or break a connector. So pretty much just trying to get everything apart from the intake manifold so that when you pull it off, you won't have any issues. So to recap to this point, the first thing you wanted to do was to remove the intake lid and the intake arm assembly. After that, you will go around and disconnect all of the various wiring connectors that are in the way um, that are going to stop you from pulling off the intake manifold and the valve covers. Um, you will probably notice that these two back here, the two coil packs, um, will be easy to disconnect those after the intake manifold is off. So you can wait to do that, that's fine. Um, the only other things that are holding it on is just, um, you know, the coolant, there's a coolant hose that goes to the bottom of the throttle body. There is also a coolant hose on the back of the throttle body. You can disconnect that. 
we just connected this breather here for the uh, PCV valve. Uh, the other hose that you'll want to disconnect is for the brake booster, which is right here on the side with the hose clamp. So I'll go ahead and take that off now. And then the only other thing holding itself to the intake manifold is a wiring harness back here. I'm just going to use a pair of snips to cut the zip tie as you can just go buy new zip ties and put new ones on. So let me take off this connector now, or the, excuse me, the hose clamp for the brake booster and we can take that hose off. The next thing you want to do is to remove the various bolts. There's 10 millimeters, one 10 millimeter here, a 10 millimeter here, and I believe there's a 10 millimeter in the back as well um, in order to remove the intake manifold. Oh, I'm sorry, no, there's not one in the back. There is a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bolts holding the intake manifold down, the upper intake manifold down. Um, two of them are 10 millimeter nuts and the other ones are allen head wrenches so let me show you what those look like yes yeah, so you'll be using a allen head like this here five millimeter that will make your life a whole lot easier. They, they do make longer versions of these, but this one I'm using will work just fine. The first ones I'm gonna take off are the 10 millimeter bolts. I'm gonna loosen those up. And then the next ones I will loosen up are the Allen head ones. Be careful, do this gently, you don't need to rush. These should not be on very tight at all. If you have a magnet, it's helpful to help you pull these out, at least the one in the back. If you do not have a magnet, you can use a pair of needle nose pliers to get the one out of the back. I forgot to mention that there are two other additional Allen head bolts, one located right here in the middle and another one located right here as well. I was having an issue trying to pull up the intake manifold and then I realized that there are two other bolts in here. Pull this up slowly to make sure nothing falls. 
and there you have it off. What I like to do is stick the bolts back into the holes, that way I know where they go. And um, also you just want to be careful when setting the intake manifold down because there is a gasket in it. Sometimes the gasket will stay in the intake manifold, um, other times the gasket will come out. So just be sure to pay attention to it. Most of the time you're fine with reusing the stock gasket that's in here. I don't need it. Uh, Sometimes you can just get away with reusing the gasket that's already on here. Uh, if you want to buy a new intake manifold gasket, the upper plenum part, you can go ahead and do so. But I'm going to reuse this one. So now you'll be looking at um, the intake manifold plenum here. Um, this is what actually goes down into each cylinder. But like I said, we're after the valve cover gaskets. Um, so we're going to be replacing this one and this one. So now will be the time to finish taking off the rest of the wiring connectors as you can get to them. Um, these other two back here should be easy to get to now with the coil packs. And some of these are just going to be difficult because the, cause the uh, wiring harness is so hard and brittle. So. Just do your best. So the worst part about doing this job really isn't about taking all that off. That's pretty simple. It's really just going to be working around this wiring harness, trying to get to the correct um, angle you can get to pull off everything in order to uh, you know get them off cleanly and put them back on correctly. So the next thing you want to do now is to there will be a banjo fitting on both sides of the valve cover. There's one right down here. You can probably see this one better over here. One right here. And there's a similar one on the other side over here. Um, these you need to go ahead and remove. I believe they are 21 millimeter um, bolt heads, but I will go ahead and remove them now. Turns out that the banjo fitting bolts are 22 millimeter uh, sockets or bolts. Um, you can use a wrench or what I did was use, use, use an adjustable wrench like this one. Uh, just make sure it's tight and be careful that you don't strip it or round it out. When you're pulling those out, be careful because some oil will come out um, as they feed the, you know, the variable valve timing for the cams. Um, just be careful, not all the oil is gonna come out. Um, some oil will come out though and you need to be extra careful that you do not lose the two washers that will come out um, There are two washers that come out you can see that are still here on this bolt And there's also a little tiny little filter That comes out and it goes like this. It will go slide straight in here like so So be careful when you're pulling these out that you do not lose those they probably don't cost very much, but you never know. So, just a heads up. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the other side now. Okay, after getting both of the banjo bolts off of both sides of the car, what you wanna do is to go on ahead and remove the coil packs from uh, both sides. Well, I'm gonna just focus on the driver's side over here. Um, I'm gonna take the coil packs off of that side and I'm gonna try and work on that valve cover first. So um, you would just pull off all three of the coil packs. It's a 10 millimeter bolt to pull them off. This would also be a good time to change your spark plugs while you're here. packs just pull them straight up and off. Like I said you're gonna have to move work your way around the, the wiring harness. Especially for 
for this back one. you pull the coil packs out on this side um, pretty much what you'll need to do now is go around and loosen up all of the 10 millimeter bolts that are holding the valve cover to the cylinder head um, there will be various ones um, I cannot show you all of them because of the wiring harnesses that's in the way but you can see the obvious ones you know go if you go around the perimeter of the valve cover there's one here one here one right here another one right here under the intake manifold or under the wiring harness there are two additional ones underneath, straight down under the under the wiring harness. Um, the one right here on the the two on the corner over here are 12 millimeter, so be careful for that. Um, there is also two 10 millimeters in the back, one straight down here, and then there's also another one that is attached to a ground strap right here that you can go on ahead and take off as well. Um, Oh, I have, my apologies. There are three 12 meter, 12 millimeter bolts right here, all on this corner. So just be careful for that. I'll go on ahead and just disconnect um, all of them now, or excuse me, loosen them all up now, so that you can just pull the valve cover off. I shall point out that the two 10 millimeter, 10 millimeters that are back here will probably require you to use a swivel joint on your 10 millimeter and then this one that's right here uh, you'll probably have to hit that one with a wrench because there is a bracket that's in the way and you can't really get a socket around it um, you may be able to take the bracket off the back but it looks to be you know more difficult than uh, it needs to be so I would just recommend using a open-end wrench just to get to that one Okay, I got that valve cover off. Um, as I told you before, you need to remove all of the bolts that are on the perimeter of the valve cover. Um, it turns out that most of the bolts on top are all the same 10 millimeter bolt. There are three 12 millimeter, 12 millimeter bolts that are on the bottom. And then I thought I was gonna be able to get away with not having to undo this bracket back here in the back but you will need to take that off in order to get a little bit more room to get the valve cover off. Um, it, is a 10 it is a 12 millimeter bolt back there. Um, so uh, please don't try and fight it because you won't get it off. So go on ahead and take that one off in the back. And then after that, you will probably spend the next 20, 20 minutes trying to take this valve cover off because it is very difficult with this wiring harness all in the way. The passenger side one should be easier because there's not much stuff in the way, but this one was, man, it was difficult to get it off, so just be patient with it. Um, I set the old uh, the valve cover there on the ground. You can just take a rag and wipe off all the excess oil around the mating surfaces, uh, just like so. Just make sure you get everything clean. If there's any gasket material there, make sure you go ahead and scrape it off with a, uh, with a uh, razor blade just so that everything is clean when you want to put it back together and you won't run into any sealing issues later on. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, this is the valve cover gasket right here on the ground. Uh, you will want to remove the old rubber gasket. This one here, you just pull it out from around and then you go ahead and reinstall your new gasket. You'll notice that one of the edges on the new gasket is thin. You want to stick the thin side down into the valve cover. And then you can go on ahead and replace the, the spark plug seals, which are these circles here. Um, there's little metal tabs here that you can just use a screwdriver on to pry them up to get them out of the way. And then once you do that, flip the valve cover over and hit the, hit the uh, spark plug tube seals out of there. And then you go on ahead and grab your new ones and push them down into the hole. Um, these are really hard and brittle. These are probably going to take you some time to get out, but be patient and they will come out. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so now that you've got your new valve cover gasket installed, and your new tube seals installed, um, you will go on ahead and reinstall the valve cover back onto the cylinder head. Um, like I said, this side was, it's probably gonna be the more difficult side because you have to deal with the wiring harness that's in the way. Um, also the uh, valve cover might, the gasket may get knocked out of place. So just keep a close eye on everything and just take your time putting it on. And then after you do that, you can go on ahead and reinstall the 10 millimeter screws that you took out to take the valve cover off. And um, then we can go on ahead and move on to the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one on now. Okay, I got the passenger, or excuse me, driver's side valve cover back on. Um, it actually wasn't as hard as I thought it was gonna be. Um, just like I said, just take your time getting on there. That way you don't knock the gasket out of the way because um, it would be really difficult to try and seat the gasket back into the valve cover if you did knock it out by accident. So just take your time doing it. And um, now all you can do is reinstall all of the screws that went around the perimeter of the valve cover on this side. And um, you can go on ahead and reinstall the banjo bolt, bolt and the two um, washers that go on there and that filter as well that came out of there and then um as i mentioned before it's getting dark out so i'm gonna have to go on ahead and do the other side tomorrow and i will go ahead and film that and show you guys how to do that side as well all right so just to recap we have taken off the driver's side valve cover and replaced the gasket on that side um as i noted before uh getting it past the wiring harness is probably going to be the most difficult challenge um, I've already put it back on after that you would have put the coils back into place tighten those down make sure you tighten down all of the perimeter bolts around the valve cover uh, remember those three 12 millimeter bolts that are down on the corner um, you can go on ahead and reinstall the banjo fitting onto the side of the valve cover um, that one actually proved to be pretty difficult as well because there's not much space in there but nonetheless we got it done uh, I went on ahead and reconnected the coil pack harness and various little connectors on the top of the valve cover now working on the passenger side um, the first thing you want to do is to uh, remove the what I'm, I'm thinking is the fuel pressure regulator that's that this thing here in the back um, It's held on by two 12 millimeter nuts one here and one in the back uh, In order to move it up, it'll move now in order to actually pull it up There is this metal line right here that goes back right to the middle Behind the intake manifold on the fuel rail. There are two 10 millimeter screws that attach it there so go ahead and take those off as well that way you can be able to lift this up off of its space um, you should be able to just lift it up and just leave it hanging uh, wherever it's at um, just be careful so you don't break anything but it may be kind of difficult to take it off but you should be able to get it off because there's so much stuff in the way I loosened it. I loosened this hose right here too, also to pull, be able to pull it off. Just rotate this up out of the way. Lay it down here on the side for now. It's fine. There is a gasket that's here. If you take that off, keep it oriented the same direction you took it off. That way you don't forget. I'm just going to lay mine flat down over here. The next thing you'll want to do is to. This metal line here, you're going to have to disconnect it right here with the 10 millimeter bolt. And also disconnect the hose that's attached to it so that you're able to get that out of the way when you go to lift up the valve cover. This is a fuel line, so make sure you just take it and have it, have it pointed straight up like that. 
And then there's one 10 millimeter right here. You can go ahead and loosen that up now. You'll need to use a swivel, swivel for this one. Be careful not to drop the bolts. I have already dropped one and I'm not very happy about that. And then this you can just pick up and maneuver to the other side here to just somewhere it'll keep it in place. Okay, next thing you wanna do is remove the coil packs, 10 millimeter, there's three of them. Pull the coil pack straight up. All right, now all that's left to do is to remove all of the perimeter bolts around the valve cover. Uh, there's various 10 millimeter bolts that go around. Just loosen those up so you can take the valve cover off. We need to get at this one with the wrench right here. There's a 10 millimeter wrench will work. As far as I can tell, there are no 12 millimeters holding this side on like there was on the other side. Oh wait, yes, there is one 12 millimeter. Actually, yeah, in the back corner here, there are three 12 millimeters. One here, one here in the bottom, and one back in the corner. Hoping we don't have to 
take off the 12 millimeter on this bracket on the back, but we'll see if we have to do that or not. Okay, we got that valve cover off. Um, this one actually was very easy to take off compared to the other side. Um, the only thing I had to do really was rather than take the bracket off the back here, I kind of just pushed it back with my hand a little bit just so I can get enough clearance to get the valve cover off. So other than that though, everything else, it just came right off very easily. So I'm going ahead and install the new gasket as I showed you on the other side. And also don't forget to replace the spark plug tube seals. And then you can go on ahead and reinstall, reinstall the valve cover back onto the cylinder head. All right, I installed the new valve cover gasket in this valve cover and I went on ahead and put it back on. Um, it went back on without any drama. Um, after that, you know, you normally go ahead and tighten up all the perimeter bolts. Um, then you can go on ahead and put the coil packs back in, tighten those down. You can put the um, high pressure fuel pump, which is this thing back here in the back. You go ahead and put that back in. And um, pretty much just button everything back up now. I went on ahead and put the, make sure you don't forget to put the banjo bolt back into this side along with the gaskets and the filter. Um, the ground strap is back on as well. Um, I put all the coil packs back in. I went on ahead and reconnected all of the wiring harness except for the obvious ones that are not here yet that go attached to the intake manifold. Um, this is back on, the hoses are back on. If you remember, you had to take off the two 10 millimeter bolts back here in the back. Um, I went on ahead and tightened those back up. Just pretty much everything that you took off, you're going to go on ahead and button it up now. So that the only thing you have left now to put on is the intake manifold. Um, and we can go on ahead and put that on now. Make sure before you put on the intake manifold that the gasket itself is there and it's all seated correctly where it needs to be. There's a little rubber gasket here that needs to go in. And you can wipe everything down and make sure it's clean as well as on the plenum, make sure that it's wiped down and clean. Okay, now that you have the intake manifold back in place, you can go on ahead and bolt it down. Make sure that you hand hand start all of the Allen head bolts. That way you don't end up cross threading them by accident. So don't stick one in and tighten it down all the way. Just stick it in loosely and then let all of the other ones, um, that way all the other ones will be able to go in easier. Uh, then you can go ahead and tighten them all down. Then pretty much you can button up everything else. Um, the coolant hose that I had pinched off will go to the bottom of the throttle body. Um, the connector here, the electrical connector for the throttle body. Um, you can connect the purge solenoid back right here to the side of the uh, throttle body. Don't forget the also the other coolant hose that is in the back of the throttle body here on the side. Uh, there is also this breather hose back here that needs to get reattached. And then you remember there is a 10 millimeter bolt that's back here holding on the um, heater hoses. Uh, moving around to the other side. We have to reconnect this connector here on the, on the side of this. Uh, reconnect the cold start injector here, as well as, uh, as, well as the electrical connector. Uh, and then we have the brake booster hose and this one 12 millimeter, 12 millimeter bolt here. So after you've done all that, everything is pretty much back together. The only thing you would need to do now is to reinstall the air intake tube, which you can go ahead and just slip that back on the place in place. This this may give you a problem here if this is in the way. Okay, like so. Then reconnect this here breather hose back on to its spot and make sure you reinstall the clamp. Um, then you can go on ahead and use the Phillips screw that you took off here. It will go right back in here into this hole. Put that one on now. 
careful as this may be a little tedious, but should be able to get started. Okay, we got that back on and ready to go. And then, um, so now we can reinstall the air box back onto here. And I mean, I didn't have a time to go get a new air filter. So for now, just to start up the car to uh, make sure it doesn't leak, I will uh, just put the old air, fil air filter back in as it's not really going to do any damage that way. Um, and then I'll go on ahead and uh, start it up. So put in the old air filter. And you want to go ahead and reinstall the uh, air box lid back here on top. like so and you can refasten all the metal clips and reconnect the mass airflow sensor connector don't forget to do this otherwise your car will run like crap and you can go on ahead and Tighten up the hose clamps here with a 10 millimeter. Usually you could just do this by hand. It doesn't have to be overly tight. Same with this one over here. Make sure you tighten this one back up. And there you go and everything is back tight so the only thing now you will need to do is to um, put the engine cover back on which is held on by these two 10 millimeter nuts here um, i'm not going to put it back on for for now um, since it's pretty straightforward and then you would just have to uh, reinstall the plastic covers back on each side and just use the push pins to uh, reinstall those um, after that, you can go ahead and start up the car, make sure it doesn't leak, drive it around, and just keep a good uh, keep a good eye on it to make sure uh, new no new leaks have developed, and um, that should be it. Um, I hope that this video was helpful for you guys. Um, my apologies for having to you know make make a few cuts and edits to it, but um, I hope that this helps you and it was pretty straightforward enough. If you do have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comments section below. And um, if this is your first time to the channel, definitely um, hit the subscribe button if you would like to see more automotive repair videos. Um, I do repair lots of cars as I get the time to, I make videos on them. And um, yeah, I probably will be starting my own a different channel soon uh, showcasing um, you know I guess the fun side of me driving because I do you know like to go fast and, and race cars as well so uh, look out for that but um, definitely hit the like button hit the subscribe button and uh, share this video with your friends all right guys thanks very much